He walked off the street and into Broadway stardom as the original Roger in the Broadway hit Rent. Then he went on to become a genuine musical theater star with turns in shows like Aida and Cabaret. And now he's stepping into the Tony winning musical Memphis playing DJ Huey Calhoun. Please welcome Mr. Adam Pascal. Hi, Paul. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. When I first heard that you were going into Memphis, I immediately went, what? And I was like, that's so, that's so weird. And then I thought about it and I was like, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think I had the same thought about it when, when the idea uh, first came up. Um, and actually, you know, I started pursuing this role before I had even seen the show. How did you pursue the show? Did you like hang out at Bon Jovi concerts and <laughs> beg David Bryan? No, 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 no. It was uh, the summer before last. Um, I was just, you know, looking for my next gig and we reached out to the Memphis team and, and we told them I was interested and they said, okay, that's pretty interesting, but Chad just signed for another year. Okay. So it kind of went away for a year. Right. And then this summer came back up and Chad was going to leave and they sort of revisited the idea. Do you do that a lot? Do you uh, put out feelers and then have people say, no, we don't want Adam Pascal? <laughs> I've done it twice and had that reaction. Uh, <laughs> Memphis was one and Cabaret was the other. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so Cabaret, a similar situation happened where uh, at the beginning of the run, yeah. we approached the roundabout saying, you know, if you're ever interested in, in thinking of Adam for this role, he would really be interested in it, is really interested in it. And it never turned into anything. And then they announced they were closing. And I, you know, I thought that, well, okay, that'll never happen. And then they called and said, we want to extend. Is Adam still interested? And before I knew it, I was, you know, rehearsing all those complicated dance numbers. <laughs> Are you amazed that that you've turned into this guy? Kind of, kind of. I mean, you know, I'm amazed if, if I can look at it as it from from the outside, at, at sort of myself and my career path. It's kind of amazing to me, but the way it feels to me is so natural to be on a stage in a musical. And I've said this a number of times in interviews. You know, I most people who are familiar with me and my career know that I write and perform my own music right. and go out all the time and do that kind of stuff. And it was always more comfortable for me to be in a musical. It always felt more of a fit than anything else. You know, I always wanted to be John Bon Jovi, uh, you know yeah. what I mean? But I don't, quite frankly, really have the personality to be that kind of rock huh. star front man in front of a rock band. That's, and, it, and, I, and, it, and I always wanted to have that. It just wasn't in me, you know what I mean? Like. Um, I'm not a fist pumper, <laughs> you know what I mean, and I'm not, uh, I'm not someone who gets the crowd going, and you know what I mean, and I, and I, so I was never that kind of guy, but yet we kind of played that kind of music that called for that kind of a guy, so there was always that awkwardness that I felt um, being, you know, in this sort of like heavy rock band, but yet not really feeling like I owned the part, hmm. you know. You know what's funny is the reason why your work in Rent was so brilliant was because there was this rawness. Right. I remember seeing it and thinking like, who is this guy? And and I didn't necessarily think you were a great actor. Right. Although now I think you're a great actor. But Thank at you. the time <laughs> I was like, but he's so real and honest right, right. and intense and, and it works brilliantly. Right, right. And so I, it's interesting that and now when you when I see actors, trained right. actors play Roger, I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was no, cool. It, it is. It's 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 very interesting and uh and I Did agree I just with offend you. you by saying that I didn't think you were a great actor. <laughs> I didn't mean that. No, and because then, then you, you were qualified great in the role. it by saying now I'm great. So it's you know, it's, I wasn't ready to give okay. you Hamlet next. Or. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, look, I, I, the skills that I possessed at that time were the perfect skill set, right. whatever they were, for that role right. at that time, right. you know? Um, and it just, it clicked, you know, everything yeah. clicked. And I, I, I never overthought it. I got up there and I sang the material. And quite frankly, like, I still sort of approach roles in a similar way in that I, I really try not to overthink them. I'm not somebody who does research and right, you know all that right. kind of stuff, and or sits around and thinking about my character's backstory and all that kind of stuff. I, that's that doesn't work for me, you know. I need to, I need to, the physicality is very much a part of it, and with a, a character like Huey and with the MC speaking in a dialect is very much like as soon as I start talking in that voice, I'm there, you mm. know, and putting the clothes on, I'm there. You know, I don't, uh, for so me, you didn't anyway. have to go down and get drunk on Beale Street. No, no, that, that wasn't required. Feel it. <laughs> you know, I, it's, yeah, that's just not, the, you know, I'm not an actor-y kind of guy. Yeah. I never had that kind of actor training. Yeah. So I'm not sort of that method person.
Have you ever been drunk on Beale Street? I've been drunk on many streets. <laughs> I, it, I could have been on a Beale Street at some point in my life, sure. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, so it's funny because obviously you're replacing Chad Kimball. Mm -hmm. In the show, Chad is from Seattle, right? And you're from uh, the, you were born in the Bronx. You're Boogie from Long Bronx, Island, yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, so they, obviously they go after the good Southern boys for this part, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of, it is kind of funny, I guess. Tell me, tell me about the dialect. How is this going? You said you just slip right into it. Yeah, you know, I mean, there are certain dialects that I've always been kind of natural at. And Southern happens to be one of them. I don't know why. I have a good ear. I do, you know, I do good impressions and mimicry uh -huh. and that kind of stuff. So like to get like the Southern drawl kind of, it like it wasn't much of a big deal. I was kind of like, all right, well, I can do this, you know, and like, and it kind of just, it, it, you know, sort of my Matthew McConaughey, McConaughey impression, you know. <laughs> that was a sneak peek of, of your Huey Calhoun. I guess, uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, he's, And I love Huey because he's a weirdo. Yes. This character is so weird. I love him. He's weird, you know, and certainly Chad's take on it. He's, you know, um, is, I don't want to say his performance is weird. Chad's his, a weirdo. Uh, but but the he, he makes the character kind of a weird guy. Yeah. Uh, my, my approach is a little bit different, you okay. know what I mean? And so it's, it's going to be a little bit more naturalistic just because that's just the way I approach it, right. you know? Um, and I, you know, I, and I'm so glad I've gotten to see Chad and pick my little tidbits of what I'm going to steal and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, you know, so. And you get to wear some crazy outfits. Crazy outfits, uh, you know, great shoes. <laughs> um, you know, and I'll look, I'm a horrible dresser, so if I fit, I, if I fit right in to this, uh, to this role of being somebody who, you know, dresses in ridiculous clothing. Now, you actually just came from the recording studio. Yeah. And you are laying down your own version of Memphis Lives in May, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite songs on Broadway. Mine too. What an awesome, It awesome is an awesome song. song. I feel that way about the whole score. And it made me think of Aida in, in the sense that, you know, there was a similarity in that when Aida opened, it got very mixed reviews. Mm -hmm. But the word of mouth was just astronomical. Like people just left that theater yeah. loving that show. Yeah. And that's it's the same thing with Memphis. Yeah. You know, they they unfortunately got kind of dogged in the beginning. But then I saw the show and I was like, what? This is this is the best thing I've seen in the longest time. I don't understand yeah. why the the reviews were what they were. But who gives a shit about reviews? It's just you know what I mean. Not it's me. it's. It, it, the reviewers themselves are the ones who really love the reviews and yeah. love to read their own clever quips and things like that. But, you know, I think certainly in today's day and age with twi uh, tweeting and the internet and Facebook and all that kind of stuff, um, they've to a certain extent become obsolete, you know? Oh, I mean, it's absolutely a dying they're, breed. Yeah, they're certainly obsolete in, in what will or will not sell tickets. You know, certainly there was a, d a day when, like, if you got a rave, you got a rave. Hey, yeah. we're going to run for however many yeah. years. You can get a rave now and close, you know, right. I mean, in a and month. They're, and they're definitely out of touch with what the audiences want. Right. I mean, I knew that the minute I saw Memphis in previews, the audiences were just right. glowing from it. Right, right, exactly. And so, you know, I, I, I think that's actually a good thing that, yeah. that, you know, we can hear firsthand from people who are in the audience, not critics, but real audience members, are they enjoying themselves? Yeah. You know, if you if you're interested in finding out that information before you go see something, don't read a Times review. You know, go 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 on the internet and read all the chatter. You'll find out everything you want to know, probably or more than you want to know. Check out Broadway.com's yeah, word course. of mouth panel. Yes. You've been married for how long now? It's going to be 13 years. And you and I know your son is what about 10? Almost two 10? sons. I have a 10 year old and a seven and a half year old. Right. Yeah. And and how are they doing? They're doing awesome. Now you at that now the ten year old you were like rocking out by then weren't you I mean uh, did, I, did I read that you were fronting a band when you were like twelve Yes that that's it? true Yeah <laughs> yeah I was uh, You know my first band was uh, was I was twelve years old and we did we might have even done a Bon Jovi song like you know we just we did all covers Right Iron Maiden Motley Crue Bon Jovi all the all the hard rock bands that was like that was our stuff you know and um, oh I have some really funny video actually of me doing what song is it. Ooh, not living on a prayer. Um, you give love a bad name. What? And we did the whole choreography down on our knees with the guitars and then back up. And, oh, <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> Let's roll that footage. Right, uh, if right I can find, actually, I, I can find it. I know. <laughs> uh, so, what are your what are your kids into? What are they? Uh, they're very into music. Yeah. Into dancing. Um, my older son is a super good hip hop dancer. I call him Mini Kevin Federline. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you know he's he's so good at it, um, 
and uh, he, yeah, he just developed this incredible talent for it. So we've been, you know, encouraging it. Um, my younger son plays baseball, and they both sing, and they both love to skateboard and surf. You know, we live in Los Angeles, yeah. so they surf. My kids are little surfers, um, and uh, yeah, they're just they're awesome, awesome kids. Is it annoying that I can't? Get over lumping you and the original cast of Rent together. No, of course not. I mean, it's, it's, but it's this thing that sort of like sticks with you, right? Absolutely, and and thank God. I mean, what a wonderful yeah. connection to be associated with. Yeah. You know, I mean, the show to this day still does such wonderful things for people who see it. You know, and, and I still get letters, and I still have people coming up to me who are so touched and moved, and you know, everything by Rent, and so. What, what an honor to have been a part of that, you know, and, and been a part of something that does such good for such so many people. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. Do you want to suddenly reveal any secrets about any of them or? About the rent cast? Yeah, about the whole rent. I know you guys all got along, but, you know, anything dirty happen or? I mean, you know, Daphne and I had our little affair <laughs> while, while the whole thing was going on. It, it broke up a couple of relationships. Cool, that's what my, I was looking for. Mine Thanks. being one of them. My poor ex-girlfriend, Julie, whose heart I broke. Um... But uh, but yeah, you know, look, and now it's been it's been many years since I've been doing theater. But it, that happens in every cast, every cast. You know, people are always having sex and cheating on their spouses with somebody else. Especially like if you create a show, you, you just you know it galvanizes people in a way, and you you form these bonds, you form these connections, and you know, and you spend so much time with each other. And especially if you're playing lovers opposite each other, it's just very easy to. To, to you know, for those lines to become blurred, you know, um, I'm old enough now and experienced enough now where I don't let that happen. But it certainly happened on Rent, you know, and 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 has and Rent is a, is 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 an interesting one because it seems to happen a lot on that show. And over the years, I, I've known so many couples that have gotten together and or, or broken up or whatever through their run at the Nederlander Theater there and. Um, but yeah, you know, I, th I get. But again, I think that kind of stuff happens on every show. I didn't know you hooked up with Daphne from Vega. I sure did. Yes, I'm a lucky man. I mean, Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> I told you that in the beginning. <laughs> and then, of course, Adina and Tay hooked up, and that worked. It did work. Yeah. You yeah. Look how many years later. How about I know, that? I know. See, yeah. so some of some of the rent, some of the rent stuff. It's so funny because I rem I literally remember the day we we all went to the movies one day. <laughs> what movie? I don't even remember, but we were. I just I, and I can't remember exactly what he said, but Tay was sitting next to me, and he was talking about Adina, and he was like, you know, expressing his amorous feelings to me about her, and it's just so interesting. All these years later, they're you know, together, married, kids, you know. So wait, so who dumped who? You or Daphne? It was mutual. It was just like this is this is. It was just so raw with emotion and and tied up in the show and the emotion of the show and like, I mean it was intense. It was super intense, but it sort of burned out. It ran its course, you know. Um, in a way, we also never quite. We were never sort of in the same place at the same time. So like, when we were first together. I still had a girlfriend, so I was cheating on my girlfriend, and I couldn't fully commit to her, and you know, I'm sure that was frustrating to her, and then finally I was like, all right, I'm doing it. I broke up with the girlfriend, and by the time I broke up with my girlfriend, she was already dating Tommy, who she's now married to. So it, it, it you know, the, the, the paths never sort of completely. So you were screwing around, you weren't dating. I suppose you could call it that, sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm not called that. Okay. <laughs> well, I love both of you. <laughs> okay. Now I have all sorts of images going on in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk quickly about the Rent movie, mm -hmm. which unfortunately did not include Daphne right. Ruben Vega, um, which still I have a little anger about. But what, what am I going to do? As do many Rent fans. Yeah. Um, how do you look back on the movie? Obviously, a lot of people are sort of down on the movie. Uh, I can only speak from my own personal experience, which was amazing. Yeah, I loved making it. Um, I love Chris uh, Columbus yeah. to death. I think he's one of the most talented super duper guys in the whole world. Um, what do you think what's what do you think is the best thing about the movie? What do you think the movie did really well? Put us in it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> right. Seriously. Yeah. You know? I thought that was the, his his first stroke of genius was yeah. to put us in it. Yeah. Um, I thought that it's weird, you know, I, I I watched the movie, I've only watched it once, and I, I have very mixed feelings about it. Um, but then again, 
I don't know if I would be a fan of Rent if I wasn't in it. And I don't say that with any uh, negative feelings towards mm -hmm. it. I say it literally as a question to myself, like, would I like this show? Would I be a fan of this show and this music if I wasn't part of it? Right. And I don't know. <laughs> I, it's, I'm so close to it and so connected to it that like it's really hard for me to, to separate. And it's only with Rent. I can certainly look at Aida or Cabaret or things that I've done and Chess and, and enjoy them or not enjoy them, whatever it is, yeah. regardless of my connection to it. But there's something about Rent I can't quite figure out hmm. if that would be something that I would have been a fan of. Um, that being said, I think Chris did a great job. It's, it's, it's a huge task to take a show and transfer it to, to the screen. Yeah. You know, as we know, and, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't work and there's no, there's no uh, rule book to follow when you're doing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Everyone who does it does it differently um, because there's no one way to do it, to make it, to transfer, you know, from stage to screen. Um, so that being said, I think he did a great job. I understand why some people like it and some people don't. But, you know, look, I, I was and am the hugest fan of Hair, the film, mm -hmm. the Milos Forman film. And that film had a very similar response when it first came out. Right. Critically, eh, audience, eh, you know, um, uh, James Rado hated it, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, like it was just, but I love it. And, a lot, and the people that love it really love it. I would, you could say the same thing about Rocky Horror. So I, I, you know, I put it, and Tommy, all of, you know, I mean, like, you, yeah. I put it in that, in, in the same category as those movies that the people that it affects, they love it. Yeah. And then other people don't like it, and that's right. it. What right. do you, you know? It's funny, I, th I feel like a lot of times the diehard Broadway people are just never happy with any of these movies. <laughs> well, that's kind of true. That's kind of true. And, you, you know, and, and also they're not always happy with the casting changes. You know, people right. get you know, very yeah. um, territorial and protective over their Broadway musicals. Absolutely. You know, yes. and, they, and they don't like it messed with. And I've made the mistake of, of reading some of the message boards when, um, when the announcement first came out that, that I was going into Memphis. Right. And I mean, the most horrible thing that people were saying about me, you know? Um, and again, I, you know, with these message boards, they always bite you in the ass, you know? Like, and I, I, I pretend like I don't read them, but I'm like, you know? Um, and, uh, but yeah, people get very protective and, and they are, um, you know, they, they don't want what it is that they love so much to be messed with at all, mm -hmm. you know? So you really have to prove yourself, you know? And I know that I have to prove myself to all. Do, does Memphis have a, have a fan name? Is there? Do they? I don't know if they have Memphisites. Memphis, <laughs> you know? Memphis. I don't Memphis know. Memphis heads. Or whatever I think it is. There are a few I'm gonna have to know. prove myself to the the Memphis. You know, the thing about the message boards is that it's all anonymous, so it's probably just the guy that you beat out for the last thing. Very possible. Absolutely. Who thinks yeah. you suck? I know. Well, you know, look. I, some people could think I suck. It's, that's life. <laughs> I think lots of other people suck. <laughs> so I mean, I have the right. They have the right too. Explain this Operation Mind Crime. Yes. Uh, Queen's Reich. Queen's Reich. Queen's Reich. Now, this is really, now, Broadway fans, stick with us. <laughs> yeah. Queen's Reich is a, a hard rock band that's been around pro probably since the early 80s, and I've been a fan of theirs since their first release in probably 81, 82. Uh -huh. um, and their singer was somebody uh, that I idolized and tried to sound like. He was one of right. the guys that really helped mold right. the way that I sing. Right. In 1988, they released a concept album called Operation Mind Crime. Um, and just being such a fan of theirs and this particular record and, and from so many years thinking about seeing this sh the, uh, produced um, as a full-blown stage musical as opposed to just a concept album um, was an idea that I just always had and I finally got, it to, to, uh, finally got to a point in my life and my career where I was like, all right, I, I can get to this guy. I can, you know, ask, get him on the phone and ask him if I, you know. And so I did. I got to them and I and I gave them my whole pitch and they said that's a really interesting idea. Here's the rights. Go go do it. Wow. So yeah. So I'm actually working. And you on, got to meet your idol. I did, which was kind of weird, but it was <laughs> it was. I did get to meet him, um, and he he's a really really great guy. And it's about okay. About? What is it's it about? A, it's about a man who becomes disillusioned with the society of the time and reluctantly becomes involved with a revolutionary group as an assassin of political leaders. Yes, that's better than I could have said it. I found it online. Ah, Whoever wrote that online, thank you. <laughs> but that's basically exactly what wow. it's about. Yeah. So it's pretty hardcore. It, yeah, yeah, you and think... there's a love story in there, and okay. uh, there's some great characters, um, uh, and you know, the music is really, really beautiful and intense and passionate and just incredible melodies and something to look forward to. Yeah. 
Awesome. It's great yeah. that you're exploring the other side of yourself. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying. I, I'm, as I'm getting older, I like to explore different aspects of myself. So what are you most nervous about uh, stepping into Memphis in a few weeks? What's, what's most nervous of... about? And it's going to be on oh, your birthday. Oh, no, it's Memphis. The note. Yep. That's With what I'm The hat about. up. You're holding right. the, hat, the hat up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I, you know, maybe five shows a week. I think I'll, I'll go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, October 25th yes. is your first performance, and it's also your birthday. Your, That's true. Your 29th birthday. Yes. And then some. <laughs> I will more, be 41. More or less. 41. 41. 41. A proud 41-year-old. Yes, absolutely. Better well, than ever. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. So excited you're back on Broadway. Thanks, Paul. And everyone, please make sure you check out Adam Pascal in Memphis. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.